This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In this lesson, we're going to look at drawing lines and polylines. We'll start by drawing a line. The line command can be accessed through the curve menu. We select the curve, line, and single line. And to draw this, I can just click anywhere on the screen for my first point. And my second point, which will complete the line, I can just draw any place on the screen that I choose. And when I click, you can see the command completes. And I have a line drawn. Of course, we can draw this line with a lot more accuracy. So we'll do that again. We'll go to Curve, Line, Single Line. And this time I want this to start at the world coordinate 0. So I can just type the number 0 and hit Enter. And I want a line that is 5 units long. So I can just type 5 and Enter. Now you can see, no matter how far I drag this cursor, I'm only going to draw a line that's 5 units long. We can add even more accuracy to this line if we want. Let me go ahead and hit the space bar to apply the command again. I'll type 0 to start the line once more at the 0, 0 point. Let's say I want to draw a line that has an angle of 35 degrees. I type the less than symbol and then 35. You can see as I move my cursor, we're constrained to 35 degrees. If I decide at any point that 35 is not the right number, I can type the less than symbol again and then a new number. In this case, 45 for 45 degrees. And as soon as I type that, you can see that we're now constrained to 45 degree angles. And I can either drag the cursor out and click where I want, or I can type a number to define how long that line is. In this case, I'll type a 12. So now you can see we have a line that will be 12 units long and is currently snapping every 45 degrees. Now I'll just go ahead and click to apply that line. Since I do have my object snaps on, at this point I have mid and end switched on. I can use those to snap to. And if I choose line, single line, you'll see I can snap to the midpoint and then come up here and snap to an end point. Now I've drawn a line that connects the midpoint of this line to the end point of this line. So a single line is all well and good and quite easy to draw. But often you'll want a more complicated line than just a single line. I'll go ahead and select these and hit delete. So the next line type we'll look at is under curve, line, line segments. So what a line segment is, is just a series of straight lines. And I still have the same control over this. I can type 0 to start this. And I can either constrain it with a length or an angle or I can just click anywhere on the screen. But now as I move the cursor, you see that we're still in drawing mode. And every time I click, I have the ability to type a number, control the line length, and type an angle. Or if I want to hold down the shift key to constrain the line to 90 degree angles. Every time I hold down shift, if you look down at the bottom, you'll see the word ortho highlight. If I let go of the shift key, you can see it unhighlights. So I can hold that down and click. And I can keep drawing. I can type a less than and let's say 15. And now my cursor is going to snap at every 15 degrees. So I can just draw that 15 degree line freeform or I could type a number. I'll hold down shift again. And I can type C and enter. And that will close the line. The thing to remember about this command is we were drawing line segments. So if I click on this shape here, you can see that I'm only selecting individual lines. And that's because the line segment command actually draws these as individual unjoined lines. To create any closed or solid shapes, we'll want joined lines. Now we have the option of selecting all of these. Coming over here and clicking on the join icon, which looks like this puzzle piece. And if I deselect and select, you can see they all select at once. And also our command line is telling us the five curves have been joined into one closed curve. 
I'll go ahead and do undo. That takes us back to these being individual line segments. If I want to draw a series of lines that are connected to begin with and don't require joining, I can draw with the polyline tool. Let me just move this out of the way. Now I'll select the polyline tool. That's available under curve, polyline, and selecting polyline. Or if I come over here to the toolbar menu, it's this very first icon. So I can just click right there, and I'm now in the polyline tool. I'll go ahead and draw a similar shape to the last shape. So I'll type 0 to enter. Hold down the shift key to constrain myself to 90 degree angles. Type a 15 degree angle. Come up. Hold shift to constrain myself to 90 to draw down and then type C to close the line. This time you'll notice when I click on the line, it's immediately joined. I don't need to go through the join process. This is quite handy, it's, it's a big time saver, and this is probably the line type you'll use most often. You may wonder why it's important to do this, and we'll look at why right now. If I come down here and click on my perspective tab, that switches my view to the perspective window, and that's a feature that's new in Rhino 5. So we have our polyline segment, and polyline means simply a group of lines that are joined together. So we have our two different shapes, one that is a polyline and the other that is made up of curved segments. And if I select both of these, and I go to Surface, Extrude Curve, and then click Straight, and I'll just drag a box up, you can see we've made two shapes that look very similar. But now watch what happens when I go to click on them. If I click on this shape, which was made from the polyline, everything selects at once. If I click on this shape over here, which is made up of the line segments, it's actually individual surfaces. So these aren't joined together. And why that's important is if I select all of these and then come up to Solid and select Cap Planar Holes, you can see the object on the right became a solid box. So it has a top, and if we scroll underneath, you can see it has a bottom as well. Whereas the shape on the left, because it was made up of individual unjoined surfaces, is not able to cap itself. Now I can select these surfaces, and pressing my middle mouse button, I can click on the Join icon. Now it's joined them together. Then I can go to Solid and Cap Planar Holes. And that does the same thing now, and it's treated the same way as the polyline shape. It just saves you a step, and as I said, you'll be using the polyline tool much more often, as the end result is typically to build solids or surfaces out of anything you are drawing. And that concludes our look at lines and polylines.